out of the seven billion people in the world, three and a half billion live in rural areas, and three and a half billion live in urban areas. So the, this is half-half. Uh, people are moving back and forth like this. What will happen in the future? The number of people in rural areas have stopped growing, and these are on their way. So in 40 years from now, the entire population growth we expect to happen in urban areas. The world will get urban, and it needs new houses and new homes. For the first time ever, more than half of humanity live in cities. As the world's population keeps growing, the speed of urbanization is also accelerating. The major urban growth of the future will take place in Asia and Africa. It is here that we will see the rise of the megacities of tomorrow. 300 million people will move from rural areas into cities in China alone between now and 2020. Over the next um, 20 years, we'll see a new city the size of Los Angeles being built every three months, the equivalent of that. But that's a lot of people who are actually setting up homes, building homes, living in homes in an urban environment who never used to do that before. All over the world, people are moving to cities to get closer to economic opportunities, jobs, infrastructure and services. One of the things we've seen with urbanisation is that women become much more active economically and politically. Um, literacy levels tend to rise, um, girls tend to get education, and one of the big pluses of that is it means that fertility rates start to uh, fall. So some of that great population pressure on the planet is going to go away. You know, one way to look at the planet, uh, whether you're a company interested in commerce or whether you're a forecaster like myself, is to consider the future of cities. Not no longer countries, but cities. This mega urbanization trend is going to drive every business plan between now and for the next almost 50 to 60 years. This rapid demographic change causes major environmental and societal challenges. One of the um, big challenges for cities is about um, what you, how the balance works between poor people and uh, richer people. You know, in large parts of Asia and Latin America, we've seen the favelas, the slums, the people on the edge of the city. Now, at one level, those are places which are sort of full of entrepreneurship and um, endeavour. On the other hand, sanitation is often very poor, water is very poor, hygiene is very poor, and a lot of people die young, and uh, there's quite a lot of health risks there. So there's some quite important questions about how do you put in that kind of infrastructure to make sure that people can live better. Most people in megacities live in slums with very little facilities. And they, may have, they may have electricity, but they will not have running water. Uh, they may live in shacks with all kinds of uh, social problems. And these are the consumers of tomorrow. This is where the emerging middle classes are being found for tomorrow. And these are the great new markets. It is in the aspirational lifestyles of the new urban citizens where we will see new trends and ideas take form. This is a fantastic uh, opportunity to grow with the future of megacities and to actually shape the future of megacities. Another major effect of urbanization is that traditional industries are declining while the service economy is growing. There may well be a case for having smaller stores with a smaller range that are much closer to where people actually are. There's a lot of new ideas, I think, that will emerge from all of this, not just the selling, but the empowering of communities and creating sustainable communities for the future. Nobody knows exactly what life in the cities of tomorrow will be like, but it is very clear that urbanization is one of the key factors that will define the future of humanity. It is in the cities of tomorrow that our future lifestyles, needs and wants will be shaped.